This is Cardell, and this is Kara. I'm Kimber. And we hope you guys have been staying safe during the pandemic. We miss you. Uh, I miss the after school classes after church. I really enjoyed those. What did you miss about church, Kara? I miss about church, about God, and the music. I love the music. I love my friends. And I love every type of music, what them sing, and what them sing. And I love my in my school too. Well, we miss you guys. Have a blessed day. Good morning, Buenos dias. Please don't forget to write your name on the comments as well as your, any praying requests that you may have. No olviden de poner su nombre en los comentarios y también cualquier uh, petición que tengan para la oración. Join me in prayer. Oremos. Heavenly Father, we thank you today because you loved us first. Dios amoroso, te damos gracias porque tú nos amaste primero. On this first Sunday of Lent, we pray that in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we see your love, mercy, and victory. En este primer domingo de cuaresma, pedimos que por la vida de Jesús, su muerte y resurrección, podamos ver su amor, su victoria. Let us seek you and desire to be more like you every day of our lives. Permítenos buscarte y desear ser como tú cada uno de nuestros días de la vida. Fill our hearts with love as we respond by praising you. Llena nuestro corazón de amor al mismo momento que respondemos alabándote. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Por Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Luke, the 18th chapter the ninth to the 14th verse. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, 
robbers, and evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. we back? Good morning, Central. So glad to be in the house of the Lord once again. And I'm sure you're happy to be present in your places of home and comfort that you're able to tune in and Hear a word from the Lord. We are thankful. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't it wonderful to see the beauty of that sunshine this morning? We welcome to our services Guy and Cecilia Carter, Joyce Ingalls, Ina Davenport, Evangelina, Debbie Wall, Shelby Dixon Citizen, Bev Ward, Sarah Clark, and family. We're so glad that you have tuned in this morning. Very thankful. I want to stop for just a few minutes and thank everybody for all the ministry that happened at our church on yesterday. We praise God that we were indeed the hands and feet of Christ. The hungry were fed. Efforts were made to help beautify our surrounding community. So I want to thank Louise Woods and Bobby Denny for leading those endeavors, and we give God praise for your faithfulness. Welcome Betty and Dave Bell. Welcome Linda Bowling, Mac, and Libby Knight. Welcome Larry and Lynn, Carly Verote and the girls. Vicki and Vern, we are so glad that you have stopped in to visit with us this morning. Once again, welcome Dixie Thomas. If you would like to hear a shout out for your name being called, then please make sure that you write your name in that comment section. Also, if you have a prayer request, then you may write those in the comment section as well, and we will lift them up at the end of our service. Welcome Nancy and Paul Woolfield. So glad to have you this morning. We thank God. So let us pray. 
Oh, wise and loving God, thank you so much for this opportunity to bow before you in worship. Thank you for this opportunity to come to the filling station, Lord, and be gassed up to receive just some more grace as we walk through this journey called life. During this season of Lent, we ask, oh God, that you would shine that light of the Holy Spirit of the dark places in our lives, those places that we need to surrender unto you, those places that we need to work out our salvation in. We give you praise for this word. As we talk about the seven deadly sins, Lord, sins that would prevent us from knowing you in the totality of who you are, those sins that would prevent us in loving our neighbors as ourselves. May you be blessed during this time. Open our ears to hear. Open our eyes to see. Open our hearts to contain. For we ask it all in the strong, bold name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we delve into this morning's text, we will be looking at one of the deadly sins. We'll be looking at that sin of pride. And I've entitled this sermon, The Subtlety of Pride. The Subtlety of Pride. And we'll be looking at six others during our Lenten journey. It began last Wednesday evening with Ash, Ash Wednesday service, where we recommitted ourselves Remembering our mortality, remembering our creation, that we are all the beloved of Jesus Christ. And so it is my prayer that we will covenant together during this 40-day journey as we look inwardly at our souls and strive with the help of the Holy Spirit to evict them from our hearts this Lenten season. How many of you know that Jesus always looks at our hearts? Jesus always looks at our hearts. He alone knows our hearts because it is he who searches it. 1 Samuel 16, 7 tells us that Jesus truly looks at the heart to determine a person's obedience, receptivity, as well as love for him. The heart is the barometer of our spiritual condition. The heart is the focal point of our very being. How often do we see the phrase, with all of your heart? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus tells us in Scripture that all of the bad things that we do come from our heart. Jesus does not judge us based on our looks, our strength, our abilities, but Jesus searches us. He is the one that Jeremiah tells us is able to turn our heart from a stone, from a rock, to a heart of flesh with love and compassion. Search me, O oh God. Search me and know my heart. Try me, O oh Lord, and know my thoughts. See if there is any grievous way in me, and then lead me in the way everlasting. Proverbs 16, 2 reads this way. All a person's ways may seem pure to them. <laughs> Y'all know how we do. All a person's ways may seem pure to them, but the motives of the heart are weighed by the Lord. It is our motives. Why do we do what we do? Do we do it because we love the Lord or do we do it to be seen by men and pat ourselves on our back? The scripture that was read on Ash Wednesday tells us that when we do alms and when we go into our prayer closet, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that the Lord God who sees secret can reward us openly. What is the motive of your heart? Why do you do 
what you do. Mm. Lost my microphone. I got a little happy on that. <laughs> but let me tell you, you might think that you can hide everything, but I came by to tell you, God sees it all. And he will bring to light what is hidden in the darkness. And he will expose the motives of the heart. Even so, as we find in this morning's text that was read by Cecilia. Verse 9 reads, To some who were confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus tells this parable. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. And I'm going to read it one more time for the Holy Ghost. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Ouch! Ouch! No, he just didn't step on our toes. Jesus stepped on our toes big time. And in essence, he's telling the story. He tells it in a parable, and he says, Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. And then the Pharisee begins his prayer like this. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Whoa! Hold on. He said that out loud? He said that out loud? Lord, have mercy. But you know the sad reality of this example of prayer? It's a lot of people's hearts that pray that way. It may not come out loud like this man, but there are a lot of hearts that pray this way. And how many of us know, I was telling my girlfriend this week, too often we forget that God is all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-hearing, and all-powerful. Too often we forget that God is that person in the car on the passenger side. Too often we forget God is with us, even as we are traveling to do our wrong. God is everlasting. He changes not. He promises to never leave us, neither, for, neither to forsake us. God created us his beloved creation. And God knows each and one of us very well. So Jesus is basically telling this parable to people who may show up and say things with their mouth, but their heart is far away from them. I'm going to say that again. This is the problem of the church, and I say the universal church. We have a lot of people that are doing the right things, saying the right things, but their hearts are so far away from what God is requiring. We may not be praying out loud like this Pharisee did, but God knows, God hears, and God sees. Jesus tells this parable to those who trust in themselves that they are righteous and regard others with contempt. To trust in one's righteousness is to rely on a very flimsy defense. This example of prayer is of one who has no need of anyone or anything because he himself is already perfect especially with respect to the tax collector. Now, in the Bible, sinners are normally grouped together with tax collectors. They were considered really vile and low people because of how they often cheated everyday people. But 
sinners being grouped with tax collectors as objects of the Pharisees' grumbling and contempt. We can be sure that this man who prays, see, first and foremost, this man knew who he was, and he wasn't trying to make no fake about it. He knew the job that he had. He knew that there were probably many opportunities where he had cheated somebody. You know, James tells us confession is good for the soul. We have to tell God about it because no matter how much you go to him, like you this self-righteous, all put together person, he's looking at you like, but baby doll, I see your heart. So this man, you know what would be a wonderful thing if the church, I say universal church, if we could really grapple with the idea that, yeah, I haven't been saved all my life, but God in his mercy and grace came alongside me and offered to me that free gift. So now instead of pretending that I've been perfect my whole life, then maybe I can just help others along the way and perhaps help them not fall in holes that I fell into. But there's something about realness that we the church got to get. Now, yeah, I may be who you see this morning, and I've been cleaned from a lot of things. But I also need you to know that I'm still under construction. I'm still being made. The wrong that you see in me, I hope you would pray for, because God is the only one that has the power to change me. So he bows before the Lord. And he beats his chest and he says, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus, who sees and knows all, he says that this man left justified. This man left forgiven. This man left receiving that which he prayed for. Jesus says over in Luke 16, 15, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts for what is prized by human beings is an abomination. Lord have mercy in the sight of God. I do never want to be considered an abomination to the Lord. The challenge for us this morning is to notice that we, as people, we like to be patted on the back. We like to be exalted. We like to be considered, oh, yeah, she's real spiritual. She can touch the heart of God. She's always out there in the streets being the drum major for justice. But why do we do it? The challenge for us is to notice that we rather like being exalted. We may think of it as the satisfaction of a job well done. We may think of it as a duty fulfilled. And then, if not careful, my title is called The Subtlety of Pride. If not careful, then we will begin to believe that the things we do, giving our money to the church, doing religious and charitable things, or don't do things like being a thief or a rogue or an adulterer, 
that really might make us feel justified because we think we're better than those who fail where we succeed. Until we let go of that notion, this parable suggests to us that we will not go home justified. We will be prisoners of our own small righteousness. And we as a church will present a face to the world that does not invite us in. Yet there is good news in this sermon. The good news of this parable is that the role of the tax collector, the role of the sinner, is available to all of us. We are all. We are the all. Everyone around us, red and yellow, black and white, poor, rich, the haves and the have-nots, we are precious in his sight. We are all sinners, yet we are all beloved children of a gracious Father. We are invited to experience the freedom that comes from throwing away our flimsy armor, our self-perceived righteousness, our self-perceived honor. If we learn how to truly throw ourselves into the arms of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, who's already here, who's already found us, he already knows us, but yet he wants to lead us home. Scripture says the day is the day of salvation. All we have to do is repent, and turn away from our wicked ways. I find it interesting as I journey in this journey of life that there are a lot of people who will do you wrong, call themselves church sanctified people. And then all of a sudden, when they do you wrong and they know they've done you wrong, they won't even stop to ask for your forgiveness. Lord have mercy. But let me tell you a thing or two. This is a journey to righteousness. We have to put on our blinders every morning. My prayer to the Lord is, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew your Holy Spirit within me. Help me keep my blinders on, God. Y'all know what they do to them horses in a horse race. They put the blinders on so that they don't look to the left side. They don't look to the right side. They look into the hills from which cometh their help. Yes, it's very easy to be distracted by what others say and do. But I come by this morning, that tax collector was justified in the sight of the Lord. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I know what I do, what I say, how I do it, when I do it. I know the sinful person that I am. But Lord, I'm asking you for mercy this morning. I want you to bless my soul. I want you to save my soul. The Word of God says that he that endureth until the end shall be saved. Salvation is a process, my people. It's a process, and God has given the opportunity of Lent to look at how we treat others. It is about us, but it is also about how we treat our neighbor. Do we love our neighbor, or do we sit back and talk and condemn our neighbor? My friends, this is heavy on my heart. I have talked with people all this week, and they're getting distracted by the actions of people who call themselves Christian. Do you not know that we are held accountable 
for every idle word that we say, for every action that we do. Now, you might not know that, but you've been informed now. <laughs> we are the beloved of God. Y'all, every morning you better put your blinder on and strive to know who this Jesus is and obey Jesus, not all the other voices that are talking around us, but obey what thus says the Lord. Pride is very subtle. Some of us do things well, and we forget that God is the giver of all good and perfect things. God gave you that gift so that you would turn around and bring the glory back to him and not to yourself. As I close, we have been given a journey, a 40-day time of Lent. I would ask that we would all work out our own soul salvation. I would ask that we would work to show the world those outside the walls of the church, show them our salvation. Watch out for the subtleness of pride in our daily walk. Let's walk into obedience, serving Jesus who sacrificed all. Jesus sacrificed his life to us to invite us into partnership with him, realizing that we are no better than anyone else. We are dust and to dust we shall return one day. I challenge us to work out our salvation because he who knew no sin became our sin on the cross. I ask that during this season of Lent, we would work out our own soul salvation with pure motives and clean hearts because Jesus Christ searches our hearts. I ask that during this 40-day journey of Lent, we would work out our own salvation because we are living epistles. We are the only Bible that many people read. I ask that during this 40 days of Lent, we would work out our own soul salvation because we serve the God of the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance. Oh, just break it on down. Infinite chances. No matter how many times you fall down. He's willing to pick you back up. I would ask that during this 40-day journey of Lent that we would reflect on our journey, that we would analyze our heart. Why do we do what we do? I would ask that during this Lenten journey, we would look within ourselves and ask Jesus to reveal all of the indications of pride that's working in us and ask Jesus to help us remove it from our heart. I ask that during this 40 day of Lent that we would surrender our lives to the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. I ask that we would surrender our lives to the one who is able, to the one who is able to present us spotless before the throne. I ask that during these 40 days of Lent that we would spend time with Jesus, that we would study our word, that we would stay. I ask that during these 40 days of Jesus, that at the end on Easter Sunday morning, that we would come forth as pure gold, we would come forth as soldiers on the battlefield for the Lord. I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that the glory of the Lord would shine upon our church, attracting all because they know that we are a group of people that love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. But most importantly as well, we love our neighbors as ourselves. Join up with us this Lent and let's allow the Lord to work on us. Say, Lord, work on me. 
work on me. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we just ask that during this time, Lord, your word declares that if we strive, if we strive to draw closer to you, you will come and meet us. Meet us where we are, Lord. But not only meet us. We know you love us too much to let us stay where we are. May you mold us. May we become pliable in the hands of you. And we would reflect your love, your mercy, your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin answered my question. What is pride? I told you he was my Caleb. <laughs> pride is the original sin in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say? <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you all for tuning in this morning. And if you found our service to be a blessing, would you hit that share button so others would hear of the goodness and the mercy and the love of God? This morning's prayer request. Lee Pruger, recovering from a fall, she had surgery and is in rehab in Watertown, New York. She asked prayer for healing. Amy Alexander is recovering from COVID. She's on dialysis stage five kidney failure. She's waiting on a transplant. And let's remember Terry and Francis. Terry's blood sugar went too terribly high this past week, and he was in the hospital, but he's now home, he and Francis. So let's continue to pray for them. Lord God Almighty, we are so blessed that we have a God, a creator God, that we can come to in our time of trouble. Lord God, your word says in 1 Peter to cast our cares on you because you care for us. And so, Lord, you've heard these requests. I thank you for the word in James that says, call on the elders of the church. Pray the prayer of faith. So, Lord, I thank you for honoring the prayer request of these, your people who have reached out in faith, knowing, Lord God, that you are the great physician. You are Jehovah Rapha. Your word says that healing is the bread of your children. Lord, I ask that as these people are walking through their individual journeys, waiting for a kidney, doing rehab in New York, that you would put blinders on them, God. Put blinders on them, that they would read your healing scriptures, that they would continue to look unto you, the author and the finisher of their faith. You said that it was by the stripes of Jesus that we were healed. You said that healing is the bread of your children. You are the balm in Gilead. You said it is your will that all of your children prosper and be in good health as their souls prosper. Lord, may we always look into the hills from which cometh our help, for all of our help cometh from the Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins and our shortcomings. We want you to see the blood of Jesus over us as we come unto you. We want you to recognize that we are your children. May you dispatch your healing power for all these people who have come asking. For we decree and we declare it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
To Pam's wonderful prayer, we want to add Mary Freeman, who will have a hip replacement surgery. And I think she did not mention Dot Henson, who also will have, um, it was hard for me to hear over there, um, hip replacement surgery as well. So we do pray for you two wonderful ladies. I ask you to remember the 40-day challenge since Pastor Pam's talked about 40 days of Lent, giving a dollar a day. Why don't we say per person and not per household? And that money will be multiplied by our Lord and used for his service. I want to thank you for your generous giving of Valentine's and the treats of candies and pencils and stickers Peppa Pig, Magnet, Scratch and Sniff cards, so many wonderful things. You were abundant in your giving. All things leaving the church this whole month have had Valentine's and the treats with them, every meal, every box. And I have enough to finish out the week this week with those wonderful things that you gave. I want to share one example from a giver and one example from a receiver of these Valentines. This month, a longtime member, I'd call her old, but she's my age, so she can't be old, brought her Valentines and candy and attached um, to the card a note saying, I felt a little silly at first, writing my name on these cards, I did enjoy eating some of the chocolate. As I was doing the cards, though, my mind started thinking of memories of my childhood. We did Valentine's in school. And as these memories came, I thought of people I hadn't thought of in years and I found myself laughing out loud over some of the memories and just being blessed. And for a little while, COVID didn't exist. 
and I wasn't alone. I think I smiled all day. So thank you for having me do those things. It really wasn't silly. And yesterday from a receiver, Mommy, look, they put Valentine's and candy in here. We can have those, can't we, Mommy? We're allowed to have those. Mommy said yes and thank you to me. I don't know the full story of the family, but I know a mother's heart, and it's happy when her children are. So thank you, Central, for all you do. Never think it's silly and never think it's little, because God multiplies, and he knows our hearts. Miss Ina, we have not forgotten you're having surgery on tomorrow as well. So we want to lift you up as well as Mary Freeman, who will be having hip replacement surgery. Lord, you are our great physician. We ask your blessings upon these ladies now. We ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit go before them. May you be present in all the tools and utensils. May you lead God and direct the hearts and minds of the doctors. May your Holy Spirit be present with them in that room, in that place where the procedure will happen. And after all is said and done, O oh God, as you guide the surgeon's hands, thank you, O oh God, as everything is sewn back up, Lord, that they will have a speedy recovery that they will do well with the anesthesia. We thank you, O oh God, for the good report they will indeed receive. We ask it all in the strong bold name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I wanted to talk. Okay. I know I preach, and I guess the Lord said I don't preach. Leave it alone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I wanted to talk about today being that day of salvation and that as we strive to grow closer to the Lord it begins with today tomorrow is not promised and yesterday is gone so let us receive this benediction Lord we ask that you would shine your light through the Holy Spirit upon our heart we ask oh God that during this Lenten journey we would be drawn closer unto you we ask, oh God, that you would shed all of the sins and weights that would hold us down. We ask, oh God, that after all is said, at the end of this journey, we will come forth as pure gold. As the songwriter penned, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, when God gets through with me, I will come forth as pure gold. Blessings on your week, family. Amen. <laughs>